What a pleasure, man. I mean, the last time you really sat down and talked was we was rap. Yeah, I was wrapping up Black Panther. I'm in Atlanta and on the soundstage with you guys, and now, fast forward. I mean, what what is the feeling from anticipation yeah. to seeing like the, the the reaction and the impact that this movie has had? It's it's wild because the the impact is bigger than we ever could have imagined, you know. And and uh, when you're in the weeds making a movie, you're just trying to focus on making sure the the film itself is good, you know. And and you hope you hope people like it. Uh, we could never have anticipated how well people received it. And it's really cool now with the age of social media that you actually get to see sort of firsthand people's experiences. Yeah. Uh, and the ones I know that resonate the most for me are kids, right? The way that kids react to the film or the excitement they have for, for sometimes seeing themselves on the screen for the first time, yeah. I think is really special, you know? Yeah. You forget sometimes how powerful the medium of film can be. Uh, and I think this film sort of reaffir reaffirmed that for me. You've worked on so many um, titles working with Marvel, and I remember Civil War was like a, a big EP job for you. But yeah. I mean, how do you deal with this one feeling different than the others? Yeah. I mean, they all they're all babies yeah. for you, but this one is like it has to be a different context to it, just being where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I mean, it, the truth is they all feel a bit different because they're all the first uh, in some regards for for me personally. But um, but this one did feel a, a little bit more emotional in a way that I again hadn't thought about up until the movie was finished because you're you're so focused on. Uh, again, making sure it's good and just the stress of the day-to-day -day of the job. Um, but yeah, to be able to step back and go, oh wow, you know, this is this is having this kind of impact with people, um, and it's something I got to be a part of. is pretty special. Yeah, tell us some of the things that you're gonna see on the DVD, like, like on the digital releases. Is, is there behind the scenes, the yeah. outtakes? Is there a commentary by Ryan Coogler, anything like that? Yeah, there's the, all of, all of the above. Uh, there's there's behind the scenes stuff that we have in there. Um, there's some cool stunt stuff with our stunt team that helped train all the Dora Milaje and Panther and, and Killmonger, which is great. Um, there's a really cool round table uh, with Ryan Coogler, Christopher Priest, ta Coates, uh, Don McGregor, the writers of the actual uh, publishing Black Panther, which I think is cool because sometimes you don't get to hear from the people who created the character. Right. Uh, and who, who even from, from, you know, Don McGregor was writing in the 70s, up until ta run today, who really sort of formed a lot of the elements that ended up in the film. Yeah. And to have that back and forth with the filmmaker, I think, was pretty cool. Um, uh, there is commentary with Ryan Coogler and Hannah Beekler, our production designer, who worked hand in hand to bring the world of Wakanda to life. There's some deleted scenes that uh, are things that we loved and wished could be in the movie, but ultimately would have made the movie three hours long, yeah. uh, which I think fans are really going to dig. So there's a lot of cool stuff on there. Yeah. and and. How do y'all protect the canon of the movie? Because Ryan seemed like he was so in tune with this movie. Mm -hmm. and I know with all the Marvel movies, y'all are fine of different directors, and they always carry the torch. Yep. How do, how do, is it, is it a little bit more trepidation in passing this torch on to a different director when this goes into uh, another iteration of Black Panther? No, you know, what, what's, what's great, I think, is that Ryan uh, and, uh, and uh, what's great is that we were on the same page with Ryan from the beginning. Um, and when we came to Ryan, we had very specific ideas of what we wanted to do with the film, especially with T'Challa and especially with Wakanda. What was great is Ryan had very specific ideas of what he wanted to do uh, with Killmonger and some of those elements, uh, and sort of shared our enthusiasm for T'Challa and Wakanda. So it was a really uh, good creative marriage from the beginning, yeah. to the point where he was actually surprised that we were so uh, up for the, the elements that he found really important because the truth was, they were just the best ideas. So, yeah. um, so it was a really good creative relationship, and I think will only be a better relationship as, as we move forward. And, and last question. A lot of people didn't pick up on this, but then like after I got out the movie the second or third time I watched it, I realized that the last fighting scene was in the Underground Railroad. Was that, <laughs> Someone was that, else had brought that. Was that for real? Uh, was that supposed to be the Underground Railroad? That was not, <laughs> that was not intentional. <laughs> Uh, but it's clearly there, so, yeah. I, so I get it. Yeah, no, we, um, look, we wanted to end the film in the vibranium mine because the vibranium is such an important element uh, yeah. uh, and, and just building the mine. It was like, how, how are they going to get a, around? Probably some sort of elevated railway. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, it's an underground railroad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a happy accident, but uh, not intentional, but I get it, yeah. Well, Nate Moore, keep doing your thing, man. Uh, it's a lot of 
young producers and stuff looking at what you do and like having a new dream of what they could be in film. So keep making those dreams possible. I appreciate you, Jamal. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you.